And on your screen now is the cover of a new book that's coming out in August 2012, Seven Principles of Good Government, Liberty, People, and Politics. It's written by former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, and he is also the Libertarian Party nominee for president in 2012. Governor Johnson, when and why did you leave the Republican Party and become a Libertarian? Well, you know, I've probably been a Libertarian my entire life, so this is kind of coming out of the closet. And I don't think I'm uh, unlike most Americans. I think there are a lot more Americans in this country that declare themselves Libertarian as opposed to voting Libertarian. So, you know, the pitch that I'm trying to make right now is vote Libertarian with me just this one time. Give me a shot at uh, changing things. And if it doesn't work out, you can always return to uh, uh, tyranny. And I'm going to argue that that's what we have right now. What are those seven principles of good government that you write about? Well, one is being reality-based. Just find out what's what, base your decisions and actions on that. Uh, make sure everybody that knows, that should know what you're doing, knows what you're doing. So communicate. Uh, don't hesitate to deliver bad news. Uh, there's always time to uh, fix things. Uh, if you don't have a job you love enough to do what it takes to get your job done, then quit and get one that you do love. Uh, acknowledge mistakes immediately. Uh, there's always time to fix things. Um, I know there's a couple more in there, but uh, very common sense. And uh, I did live, I continue to live my life by these principles. Are these principles that you had and used when you were governor of New Mexico? Always, always. And, uh, and I actually delivered one of my state of the state addresses use, using the seven principles. Look, here's, what, here's how we need to conduct ourselves. And um, anyway, uh, just very, very commonsensical. So, if you would, the philosophy, your philosophy and the Libertarian Party's philosophy of the right role of government, the right size of government. Well, uh, so, so libertarian philosophy, if, if you were to just with a broad brush stroke, the notion that most of us in this country are socially uh, accepting and that we're uh, fiscally responsible. That's a broad brush stroke. A broad brush stroke is wearing a pin, a lapel pin that says, I'm pro-choice regarding everything. Well, pro-choice regarding everything means that Actually, if your choices involve putting other people in harm's way or your choices end up uh, defrauding or harming another human being, um, then that's when the government, that's where the government does have a role to protect us against individuals, groups, corporations that would do us harm. As governor, did you, do you, did you shrink the size of the state government? Do you? You used your veto pen quite a bit, but were you able to shrink the size of the federal the uh, state when government? When it came to dollars, uh, I was able to cut the rate of growth in half, and that was the historical rate of growth. I always pointed at state government employees. Uh, over an eight-year period, uh, there were 1,200 fewer state employees, starting with 12,000, ending with 10,800. It was a 10% reduction in state government employees, which I always pointed out unquestionably uh, said that, hey, we were doing things more efficiently because we were doing things with fewer state employees and we were doing more things. I'd like to point out that the real driver of state budgets, state to state, uh, is uh, Medicaid. And that, of course, is a federal entitlement. And you really, it's, it's open-ended. And that's what has us in the predicament that we have are the entitlements, Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security to a lesser degree, but we have to address the entitlements. We have to address the entitlements. And what is the libertarian position on that? Well, uh, I am promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013. Now, that's not promising a balanced budget. That's promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013, believing uh, that if we don't reduce government expenditures by $1.4 trillion, that we're going to find ourselves in the midst of a monetary collapse. And a monetary collapse, very simply, is when the dollars we have aren't worth anything. And that's going to be the consequence of us continuing to borrow 
and print money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar. Governor Gary Johnson is the author of this book, Seven Principles of Good Government. He is also the libertarian candidate for president. What other issues are do you write about in this? Well, this being an, uh, this being kind of a background on on my history, uh, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974 and grew that business to employ over a thousand people uh, using those same principles. You know, showing up on time, just doing what you say you'll do for people. Uh, it's amazing uh, how far that will go. Uh, it talks about my running. Uh, I have been completely outside of politics my entire life. Uh, the only two other political offices that I've run for, governor of New Mexico and re-election governor, as governor of New Mexico. And I may have made a name for myself. I did make a name for myself, arguably vetoing more legislation than the other 49 governors in the country combined. Uh, I vetoed 750 bills. I took line item veto to a new art form, thousands of line item vetoes. Um, I said no to billions of dollars worth of government spending. And I said no to legislation that I think would have just added time and money for us to have to comply with those laws, but that it wasn't going to make us any safer, wasn't going to make, it wasn't going to improve our lives in any way, and it was going to add money that we were going to have to spend on it and, and time to have to be able to comply with it. You also funded your own campaigns, essentially, didn't you? Well, my first campaign, I funded it uh, out of a $550,000 primary. Uh, 510 of that was mine, and 30 of, uh, 30 of the remaining actually came with just a few days to go in the primary because it appeared as though I might actually win. And I, I'd like to point out that New Mexico is a state that's two to one Democrat. So getting elected, uh, vowing to be a penny pincher, spending my first time proving that I was a penny pincher beyond reproach, uh, and then getting reelected by a bigger margin the second time than the first time, I think, I think that speaks to the fact that people really appreciate good stewardship of tax dollars. The Libertarian Party is often associated with changing the drug laws, and you've advocated for that as well. Changing the drug laws. Drug laws, yes. You know, since 1999, I have advocated legalizing marijuana. Control it, regulate it, tax it. I think we're at a tipping point uh, with regard to uh, marijuana and legalizing it. I think that, um, that Colorado is going to do that. It's on the ballot in Colorado uh, this November. Uh, regulate marijuana like alcohol. I think it's going to pass uh, when it passes, and if it doesn't pass in Colorado, it's going to pass. 50% of Americans now are saying they support the notion. It's a growing number. It's a growing number because people are talking about the issue more than they ever have before, recognizing 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related, not use related. That's not to discount the problems with use and abuse, but that should be the focus. I think when we legalize marijuana, I think we're going to take giant steps forward regarding all other drugs, and that's going to be starting with looking at the drug issue first as a health issue rather than a criminal justice issue. Let's get the police out on the streets enforcing real crime. Uh, let's free up the courts and let's empty the prisons of the 2.3 million people that we have in them, the majority category of those being drug related. And of course, it, we're not going to, we're not going to get release anybody from jail that has committed other crime in lieu of drug crime. But those that are in jail, victimless, nonviolent drug crime, uh, there needs to be, um, um, there needs to be commutation of those sentences. And there needs to be pardons for 30 million Americans that, but for our drug laws and have served out their sentences, but for our drug laws would otherwise be tax-paying, law-abiding citizens. Governor Johnson, where do you see the intersection between Republican policies and libertarian policies? On the right, when you talk about a balanced budget, when you talk about a balanced budget and uh, we need to balance the budget immediately, uh, we need to cut federal spending strong U.S. dollar, monetary policy, that's the intersection. 
if I can jump ahead, the intersection when it comes to Democrats is civil liberties. Look, let's repeal the Patriot Act. I would have never signed the National Defense Authorization Act.